Welcome back. Demand and supply. This is our third discussion about supply. Well, here's our list. And lo and behold, just like in demand, uh, these supply lines represent producers and their particular costs and how high a price will produce or incent make an incentive for them to produce a certain quantity. Just like in demand, we have uh, various suppliers out there, and they represent are represented by all these individual supply curves. If you add them up, you end up with a market supply curve like this one, and that's what we're working with when we draw these supply curves. Well, these supply curves represent supply given a certain set of conditions when nothing else changes, all else being equal, as the price goes up, these people are willing to supply more. As the price goes up, these people are willing to supply more. It's covering their increasing costs, so they're willing to supply more. But sometimes things change. And when things change, then you got to draw a new supply curve, just like in demand. Now, here's our list of things that might change. What's interesting is you'll notice that each of these or most of these anyway, it's going to have to do with costs. When costs change, supply changes. Watch. Here's resource prices. Remember our hot dogs and our pigs? Well, if the price of pigs goes up, a resource into making hot dogs, then the cost of making a hundred pigs is not this much, but it's more. That much. So instead of it being, say, oh, I forget what it was, oh, two dollars, etc., it's now way up here. Three dollars. So the cost of pigs goes up, and at every output level, the cost for this supplier goes up, and we get a supply line like this. So this supply line is no longer valid. It's this new yellow one that's important. As the price goes up, we supply less, actually. What happens? Like at $3, we were willing to supply $200. Now we're only willing to supply $100. The costs have gone up. These prices don't cover, these old prices don't cover the cost. You'd have to spend more money on a hot dog in order to get me to produce more hot dogs. What's happened? When the price has gone up, less supply, supply has shifted to the left. Less supply, left. What happens if the price of pigs goes down? That means that 100 hot dogs, it doesn't cost me this much anymore, it costs me less and all these other successive units of production costs less. So we get these dots down here instead of up here, less costs. We draw a new supply curve like this. And as a matter of fact, when there are lower resource prices, we have more supply, which is represented by a shift to the right. Again, resource prices are linked with costs, aren't they? When resource prices go down, I'm willing to supply more because my costs have gone down. So my costs are no longer up here, they're down. My costs are no longer up here, they're down, etc. I'm supplying more to the right. When costs go up, when resource prices go up, I'm willing to supply less. It's not, you know, it's just the old price doesn't cover my costs anymore. In order for me to make 100, you better pay me more. So you have to pay me $3, so it's up there. That's the idea. Resource prices have to do with cost, don't they? Here's technology. Technology is an interesting one. Mostly technology has to deal with this turning to the right. This is what we're going to talk about. The idea is, is if you have improved technology, if I get a new kind of machine in my hot dog making plant here, here's my hot dog making plant, and I've got a new machine in here that looks something like this, and it's able to process the pigs quickly, make more hot dogs per hour, and make more hot dogs per worker, my costs have actually gone down. Sure, I make an initial investment in the machine, but over time, this thing is pumping hot dogs out. They're coming out of the side like I can't believe. You know, There's millions of hot dogs coming out here. My costs have gone down. So when there's an improvement in technology, costs go down, more supply. Supply shifts to the right. Again, technology has to do with cost too, doesn't it? Taxes and subsidies. Now this whole list, you know, you're not going to get it perfect the first time. You're just going to have to work on it again, just like demand, have a practice worksheet, get some problems together, shift these curves back and forth. Taxes. When taxes go up, my costs go up. And when costs go up, I supply less, less supply, shift to the left. If taxes go down, I supply more because my costs have gone down, so my 
supply curve shifts to the right. Taxes have to do with costs. Subsidies, the same thing. If the government gives me a subsidy to make hot dogs, it's as if they've lowered my cost. They give me a dollar for every hot dog I make or something. That's lowering my cost. So a subsidy lowers my costs and I supply more. If they cut back on a subsidy like they might do with wheat or corn nowadays, then it's going to cost me more to make my wheat or corn and so I supply less. So subsidies have to do with costs. Now here's the most interesting one. I'm not sure I'm going to get into it in great detail, but price of other goods. That means the price of alternative things like bacon, for example. If I could sell bacon for $1,000 a pack, you know what? I'd stop making this machine. I would stop making hot dogs. I'd get these pigs and I'd start changing things in my plant so I could make bacon. The incentive is high. The opportunity cost of producing hot dogs has gone up. Here's my choice. I can either produce bacon or hot dogs, okay? If I could sell bacon for a dollar a pack and now I could sell, uh, if I could sell bacon for, sorry, a thousand dollars a pack and I could only sell hot dogs for uh, $10 a pack, what am I going to do? Bacon. Bacon. The opportunity cost of using my plant to make hot dogs is extremely high now. So when the price of bacon goes up, my opportunity cost for making hot dogs go up, less supply. If the price of bacon went way down to 20 cents, the opportunity cost of making hot dogs has gone down. I could either make bacon or hot dogs in this machine. What do I do? What do I do? Bacon, I could sell it for a ton of money. My opportunity cost for making hot dogs has gone up. Supply less. It's a complicated one, very fun. I wish I could have more time to talk about that one. Number of sellers does not, but anyway, this is the opportunity cost. Again, it has to do with costs. Now, number of sellers, well, that's different. That's just simply more sellers, more supply, turns left, more producers. There's more plants out there. Somebody else enters the hot dog making uh, market, and so more suppliers supply to the right. Fewer suppliers if I decide to close down my factory, supply to the left. Things that shift the supply curve. But, you know, just like in um, demand, the most interesting part is underneath the supply curve represents cost, marginal cost. How much does it cost to make the next unit? Underneath the demand curve, marginal benefit. Next time, we're going to put these two things together, this cost and benefit, show you the equilibrium, and that's going to be the payoff. That's going to show you why equilibrium and markets are so interesting. See you then. Don't miss it.